Uh, welcome guys to the first video in the computer science 2a series. So I'm going to show you now how to set up um, your ID, your integrated development environment, the tool that we're going to need in order to to start coding, right? Because we want to be we want to be Java Java developers, right? So the first thing that you're going to need is what we call a JDK, which is which basically stands for Java Development Kit. So let's just look at. Um, OK, I don't have my notepad here, but the Java Development JDK just stands for Java Development Kit. Right, it's the kit that you need in order to develop Java applications. So there's different versions of the Java development kit. So the version that we're going to be installing is going to be uh, JDK 17, version 17. That's that's the latest um, stable version. So we're going to install that. So all you have to do is open your browser. It can be any browser. I'm using Chrome, Google Chrome. So I'm going to type here JDK and then 17 and then just say download. And then you press enter. And then you look for the website, the, the official website, which is Oracle. You can download it from other websites, but Oracle is, is the most trustworthy website to, to download it from. Then you're gonna, as you can see, it's it should say 17.0.9. That's the stable version that we're gonna download. And then depending on your operating system, you download the specific file. Since I'm using um, a Windows 11 operating system, and it's um, and is it, if you if you notice the versions here, like the operating systems required, right? But at minimum should be 64 bit. As you can see, Mac OS ARM 64 DMG installer. It has to be at minimum 64 bit. So I'm going to choose the. Um, OK, since I'm using Windows 11, I'm going to choose this one. The Windows X64 MSI installer for Windows 10 people. You just use this one Windows X64 installer. So I'm going to use I'm going to click on this link. And then click on it and then it's going to download right after downloading you're just going to double click on it and then you follow the procedures and then you just say install it's that straightforward so let's just give it a minute i already have it installed i just want to show you um how it's go how how it looks the, the how the installer looks after you've clicked on it and what are the necessary steps, but it's pretty much straightforward. You just have to follow the instructions on the installer. So we're just going to click on the installer and then we wait for it to load. As you can see, it says um, the software has already been installed on my computer. Would you like to reinstall it? So let me just say yes, um, but I'm not going to install it. I'm just going to show you the options that you're going to see after you run the installer. So, OK, it, it, it's going to have to remove first, then install. OK, I see now. OK, so let's. Let's remove the, the JDK and then reinstall it. OK, now it's going to install. So these are the options you're going to see. It's going to say welcome to the installation wizard, right? All you just have to do is just follow the instructions. It says next, you click next. And make sure you don't change anything here. Or if you want to, if you want to keep it simple, you could change the location and just save it on the C drive. You could do that, but I'm just going to save it here. So this is the location of your JDK. It's very important to, to see to know to know where the JDK is located. So I'm just going to click next. I won't change anything and then it's going to start installing, right? 
and it needs uh, administrator uh, privileges in order to install. So you just say yes, you just accept. And then it has been successfully installed. So now how do we confirm that it has been successfully installed? So you just run your command prompt. You can either run it as an, as an administrator or just click on it. Run as a normal user. It doesn't really matter. So now let's see if it did install. So the two things that I need to check is for the compiler and the and the Java language itself. So let me say Java C. Java C is just it's just an abbreviation for Java compiler. So I'm gonna say Java compiler, and then I just do um, um, hyphen hyphen, and then I just say version, and then I press enter. It should show me the 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 Java compiler version. The version, the Java compiler version is going to match with the Java version that you've installed. So if you if you recall our installation, right, to install the latest stable version, which is this one, 17.0.9. If you check here, it's saying Java C 17.0.9. So we are on the right track. So let me check the Java version now. So Java, and then I say version, and then I press enter, as you can see. It says I have installed the Java version this and it, it, it was it was uploaded or that update was yeah, was added on the 17th. And then there's LTS. LTS uh, mean it just means long term support. So long term support means that the, it has that long term support. It's like a stable version, right? They're going to keep supporting this version. So it's now officially complete. It's like a complete version. They just add a few tweaks here and there. If if you guys report um, any bugs or they happen to find any bugs in the latest edition, they can just make those few tweaks. So we are good to go with Java. We will get to Java FX. For now, there's also Java FX. We'll get to that. For now, we just need to focus on Java and see but we've installed the programming language itself, right? We haven't installed the integrated development environment. Which um, integrated development environment are we going to install? I'm going to install Eclipse. So I'm going to say Eclipse download, as simple as that, and then you click the first link. It's usually going to be the first link. And then and then um, you just click here. As you can see, it says download x86 underscore 64. Depend, I think it, depending on your operating system, it should automatically update. I think if it's 32 bit, it should say underscore 32. I think so, but I, I'm not sure. But yeah, I think it should it should update. It automatically loads the version based on your operating system. So you don't have to worry about like choosing the right installer for your for the right operating system. So you just click download, and then you click download again, and then done. But then um, yeah, and then you just wait for it to run, and then you install. But I already have it installed. I already have it installed, um, but let's just wait for it to finish so that I show you the installation. Because there's many um, Eclipse IDEs for different uh, programming languages. There's also for PHP, there's also for C, C and C++. There's also for the Java for professional developers. Like there's different versions of Eclipse. So you just have to know the right version to install. Uh, let me see. Mm. OK, it's almost done. It's almost done. Then we're going to start coding. Then we're going to ch just uh, confirm if everything is properly installed by running a simple Hello World program. Okay, 
done. It's wrapping up. Okay, now it's loading. The installer is loading. Let's wait for the installer. And that's pretty much all you need. These are the two things that you need to install. For now, we're gonna we're gonna set up other tools as we go as we go along. So you're gonna just choose the very first option. As you can see, there's different IDEs. There's for Java developers. There's for enterprise. That's for companies. There's um, it's like a professional. It's for professionals. People who have like a lot of experience and they're now in the industry. This is that pack. This is that package. Or this is the that, that IDE. Then we have the IDE for C C plus plus developers. PHP for this is for people contributing to to the Eclipse company different versions. So we're going to choose the very first one for Java developers. Just click once on it. As you can see, it will automatically detect the location of your JDK. And then um, I don't want to I don't want the desktop shortcut, so I'm just going to remove that. But then I need to have a start menu entry. The start menu entry is basically this. When you press this and then you type Eclipse here, you should find it. That's the start menu. The part. And then I'm going to click install. But I already have it installed. It might. Might give me a problem, but let's see. Or maybe I installed a different version. Let me see. Eclipse. Oh, I already have it installed. So the exact same version. But yeah, that's how you would install it like this. And then you just install. And then once it's done installing, you can open the ID. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to waste time reinstalling it. And then to to make things simpler for for UJ students, right? For UJ students, you're just going to go to eve.uj.ac.za forward slash resources forward slash CSC. CSC just stands for computer science. Then you're going to find the tools, everything that you need from the JDK, there it is, the JavaFX, the Eclipse version, all the tools you need for, for second year students. So if you want Eclipse, you can just click on the link. And then it should really direct you to the Eclipse version that they use. Then you just click on the download button here. And just say download again. And then there we go. You have the, it should say, okay, it should be 2022. But either way, so there's the IDE. The first, the first time you open it, it's going to look like this. Right, it's going to have this welcome page. So I'm just going to click the X arrow there to cancel it. And then I'm just going to create a Java project. Don't worry about other options. It's automatically going to, remember it automatically detected your IDE, right? The, the Java, the JDK, I mean. So I'm going to call it hello world. And then click next. That's the project name. And you're going to always need a source file for where your source code is going to be stored. And then um, let me see. Will I need this module? What do I think? Nah, I'm not going to work with modules anytime soon. So just going to delete that and then leave the source folder empty. And then I'm gonna, I think it might, okay, let me, let, me, let me try, but I think it might complain about something. So I'm gonna, you're gonna right click on the source folder, right? And then you go to new, and then you scroll down and look for class. You're gonna create a class. I'll explain later why 
why you, you, why you have to create a class in order to write to create a, a hello world program right we'll explain that later so the name of the class um it's going to be hello hello world yeah let's just call it hello world and I'm gonna click. You see here it says which method subs uh, which me method stubs would you like to create? I would like I would like for you to have a main function. Remember the main function it serves as an entry point, right? So basically, what do, what do I mean by an entry point? So basically, when you run your application, the compiler is gonna look for a main function. If it doesn't find a main function, you won't be able to run your code. So I need that main function. Even if it's a simple application like Hello World, I, I need that main that main function. So I'm going to click finish. And then there we go. And then I'm just going to remove, get these things out of the way so that you can see clearly. I hope you can see clearly. Um, as you as you get used to Java, you're going to find the shortcuts, but for now I'm going to type it in full. So how would I output to the console or to the terminal? I would say system, all right, um, dot out, dot print line, all right, and then semicolon. And then I place the text that I want to print, which is hello world followed by an, ex an exclamation mark. And then I just click the run button. And then when the first time you're running Eclipse, it's gonna show you this option, right? So just click always save resources before launching. So you don't keep popping up every time you wanna run. You're just gonna automatically run. So I click okay. And then there's hello world. Then you know that everything was set up correctly because you can see hello world we created a simple java program and it is running there's the hello world here so that's all you have to do to set up your your programming environment so that you can start coding in java but for, for before we get before we get to the ide we're gonna we're gonna code in notepad to, to to get a glimpse of the process behind like the to get the 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 to, to get what's happening under the hood right because if you just click that button run you don't really know what's going on right so in order for you to really understand java we're gonna use uh notepad or notepad plus plus to run it and then we to code to to type the to write the statements right the Java statements, and then once we're done writing the Java statements, we're going to locate that file and then run it via CMD or the terminal. So that's all you had to do to set up um, the Java IDE and the the Java J, the JDK and the IDE, the programming environment. Thanks for watching. Um, see you in the next video.